today uh, what we are planning to discuss is uh, scaling connections in PostgreSQL. So the major reason uh, we have chosen this topic uh, in this meetup is uh, uh, we had faced uh, for one of our customers there was a huge outage just because of the connections. Okay. And we had implemented a uh, suitable solution of scaling connections using connection pooler. So that's why we thought to give some knowledge about connection pooling in PostgreSQL. <coughs> So, and uh, myself, I am Akas. I am a database engineer and I am currently leading the PostgreSQL tech team at MyDBOps. And uh, I also work on uh, MySQL and SQL Server, currently focusing on the database migrations from uh, Oracle SQL Server to the MySQL or PostgreSQL open source databases. And uh, also, I am working in more than six plus years in the database. So, and about our organization, MyDBOps. Uh, MyDBOps is founded in 2016 as a two-member team. Currently, uh, our tech team is more than uh, 100 plus members. Majorly, we are providing services on databases and the support to the all organizations in e-commerce and defense everything. And uh, yeah, majorly we are providing two types of services. One is uh, consulting services where we look on to the particular targeted engagement. It means that uh, we will look on the particular issue and we will provide the solutions. And then another one is manager support services, where we will take care of the databases of the customers end to end, including the uh, operational activities, monitoring with the help of the 24 by 7 available DB team. Right now, we are focusing on MySQL, MongoDB, PostgreSQL, and distributed SQLs like TiDB and Yugabyte as well. So today topic, what we will be seeing about is, first we will see about what is connection pooling and why pooling is required for the database like PostgreSQL and what are the available connection poolers we have in open source. And we will deep dive into PG Bouncer and its configuration. Finally, we will see a comparison of direct connection with the database and the, with, through the connection pooling through a benchmark. So let's talk about what is connection pooling. So connection pooling is a pool of database connections which will be created already in place. Okay, in case of there is a need of connection means instead of creating at the time, it will take the connection from the pool and re reuse it whenever needed. Okay, so okay, so what we'll do first let's say we have an application and we are having one database server. Okay, so let's say this will be the default architecture. We will make the connection directly to the database. Now let's put the connection pooling in this architecture. So what connection pooler will do means it aligns between the application and the database. And uh, connections will directly hit to the pool and very least number of connections will hit the database. That is the point of connection pooling. So connections, uh, all the applications will fetch the connections in the connection pool and uh, available connections will be hit to the database. So, this is the basic implementation of the connection pool. So what will be the advantages of having a connection pool is uh, so it will limit the connections to the database. Okay. So if you see the previous architecture, so we are sending some hundred number of connections, only the very limited number of connections will hit the database. So the major advantage is the overhead of the connections will be greatly reduced. Okay. The connection like uh, if you are creating, destroying the connection means it also consumes CPU and memory. So that will be given to the another connection pool layer. So our database can, we can receive that resource for some other purposes. That's the major impact of the connection pool. So, and uh, many of our customers ask, uh, they are handling MySQL as well. Okay, and when we propose the connection pooling for them, they ask, uh, we are handling much more connections in the MySQL. Why do we need connection pooling only for PostgreSQL with limited number of connections? The answer is the architecture of the PostgreSQL. So the PostgreSQL architecture is process-based. If you are considering MySQL architecture, it's a thread-based connection. Okay. It means that for every connection, PostgreSQL will create a new process. Okay, this is the deep architecture of the PostgreSQL. So the PostgreSQL server process is the main process that is the responsible for starting up all the record process like the background records, etc. These are the essential process to run the PostgreSQL database. And shared memory, of course, it is the common memory available for all the processes. Now let's say there is an application hitting a connection. Okay. So let's say there is an application hitting the database means what it will do? It will first reach out the PostgreSQL server process. Server process will do the authentication. 
In the case of the authentication is failed, it will reject the connection. In case the authentication is successful, it will take a copy of the PostgreSQL process and assign it to the particular application request. Okay, so this will take a copy and assign the shared memory number and the connection will be as process will be assigned to the application. Okay, so this is for a single process. Let's say for the next number of any number of connections also the same process will repeat. Okay, so this has been repeat for the hundred or thousand number of process. Okay, the major problem with this architecture is if we are having very what less than fifty or a hundred number of connections, is there no problem? But when we are having thousand number of connections, means the context switching will be slow in process level. Okay, if you are having thousand process when it means context switching of your based on your CPU will be really slow, and also the resource usage will be very high. Okay, uh, when compared to threads, the resource usage of process is much higher, and the creation of the process is also much higher. So those are the disadvantages of uh, having that. So this is okay. This is the uh, benchmark done by the AWS team in uh, 2021. Okay, so what they are saying is even uh, the idle connection impact as well. Okay, they uh, opened some connection of 100. Okay, there is an immediate drop in the free memory. Okay, you could see the when there is an increase in connection, there is a drop in the free memory. Once the connection is closed, the immediately the free memory is released. Okay, even the connection is just idle, it doesn't perform any query, it just opened the connection and stayed for 5 minutes and closed. So what they tried to uh, show in this uh, from this benchmark is, even the idle connection will also uh, uh, allocate resources. So okay, so it's better to not only the active connections uh, like uh, queries, uh, it also to need to understand the idle connection as well. Okay, so other than that, uh, mm, yeah. Okay. Now let's see why MySQL is handling more connection. We'll have a quick uh, review of the MySQL architecture. Let's say this is the MySQL server and MySQL D is the parent process. Okay. And the application is hitting the request means it will be pipeline connection request will be there. And the connection request will be received by the receiver thread. Okay. Receiver thread will check for the thread cache if there are any connection or user previously created threads available. Okay. In case if it is available, it is taken from the thread cache and also create a user connection. Okay. In case if it is not all of it means it will create a new thread. Okay. So the major advantage of this architecture is it is having inbuilt thread cache. In PostgreSQL, we doesn't have any concept of caching. And other than that, it all in MySQL is creating only threads. Okay. Threads is a sub of a, a process. So what will happen when comparatively with process, uh, threads is uh, easier to create and easier to manage. So that's the reason uh, when we are having MySQL, even with uh, many number of connections, it is easy to scale and also uh, it uh, when there are more number of connections, it is easy to scale. Yeah, and the resource efficiency, when compared with the process, creating threads is very uh, minimal usage and uh, context switching will be faster when compared with the process. So that is the advantage of uh, this connection uh, using threads. So this is the reason we are mostly recommending to use the connection flow of PostgreSQL. Okay, so if you are giving the all work of connection creation and destroy to the another layer of the database, that is a PostgreSQL, then our database can save the resources. That's the major agenda. And what are the available connection flows? Let's say if you are okay to implement the connection flow, means there are plenty of open source pool connection flows are available. So first one is most popular one we could say is PG Bouncer. Okay, so PG Bouncer, it is available since 2007 and it is the most popular connection puller. And the reason is it's a simplicity of a concept. Okay, you can anyone can easily uh, configure PG Bouncer just by using the configuration file within mostly 5 to 10 minutes. That much simplicity is there. And uh, other than that, we do have plenty of connection pullers like PG Pool 2. It is like an advanced version of a PG Bouncer. Uh, its configuration is bit high because it is having lot of features. So in case if you want to implement, you need to be much more careful and uh, test it out. And PGCAT is like a kind of fork of PG Bouncer. Whatever PG Bouncer supports the settings, everything PGCAT will also support. But it is using multi-process one. So, but PG Bouncer is single process one. We will see much in detail about that. And uh, also we do have much other than that. 
yeah odc also there and pg agro so these are the top connection coolers uh, available in the open source market so we can't cover all the open source tools so what we will do we will deep dive into the pg bouncer one and we will see its configuration and the benchmarking of the pg bouncer so pg bouncer first it's a lightweight process so lightweight in the sense it will use only a single core of your machine okay so you can easily post uh, deploy it on either on your database server or else on your DB server, it won't cause much trouble or much resource spike on you. Okay. And also it doesn't pause any of your query. It will just directly get the query from the application and it will send it to the backend database. So that is the reason it is not having any high CPU usage. And as I told you earlier, it is very easy to set up. Uh, the complex uh, is having mostly 10 variables only. Okay. You can easily set it up. And uh, we don't need to have any different authentication other than that. So whatever database authentication you are using, you can simply use the same. You don't need to put any different uh, uh, user creation password for the PG browser. So this will be the basic architecture. So what we'll be having is application and then the PG browser. So applications will be directly connected to the PG browser port and the IP and PG browser will talk to the database. Okay. The application to connection puller is called the client connections, client side connections and the connection puller to the database is called server side connections. So now let's see about the configuration of the PG pool. So while configuring PG pool, we need to understand a very important thing is P pooling mode. Okay. There are three pooling modes available in a PG bouncer. Okay. Uh, depends on our application and recommend, we need to choose the proper pooling mode or else uh, we may got some issue. Okay. Uh, we may face into some incompatibility. So let's talk about uh, each pooling mode in detail. First one, session pooling mode. Okay, session pooling mode in the sense for each session on the client end, there will be a connection on the server end. So PG for if you are opening your own connection and on the client side, it will open another connection on the server side. So for each client side connection, there will be a server side connection. That is mentioned as client and server connection is bad. Okay, let's talk about this scenario. There is an application and a PG browser and I am having two connections available in my PG browser config and the database postgres is also running. Now let's say one connection is hitting my PG browser. Okay, so what it will do, PG browser will check whether any connection pooling is available or not. Okay, it will see one connection available in my pool and it will make the connection to the backend database. Okay, let's say another connection is also hitting, it will see another connection available and it will make the connection back into the database. So you can see for each connection on the client side, there is a connection on the server side. In case client closes the connection, okay, immediately the server side also connection will be closed and the connection will be sent back to the pool. Okay, this is the concept of the session level pooling. So advantage of this pooling is you can set use your session level variables. In case you are having some uh, session level variables in your application means, then this is the appropriate pooling mode for you. And also this is the only uh, pooling mode that supports the prepared statements. So your application is having a prepared statement means then you don't have much options, you need to go with this one. So next important thing is the transaction pooling mode. Okay, so what transaction pooling mode will do is uh, for each server connection, there will be a when it won't start the connection immediately it will only start whenever the new transaction is started okay once the transaction completed either by committing or rollback it will immediately send the connection back to the pool it won't wait for the connection to be closed so that is the difference between the session and here let's say i am having one connection available in my connection cooler okay okay user one is trying to connect to the database okay user one connected to the database it won't connect if you can see until I have triggered a transaction, there is no connection on the server side. Okay. So in, once I initiated the begin, that is I am starting a transaction, I am letting to know the PG bouncer that I am going to use the connection. Then immediately it will use the allowable connection and make the backend connection. Okay. I am executing some statements. Once I either committed or rollback, then immediately it will close the connection and send it back to the pool. It won't wait for my connection to be closed here. You could see my application is still connected, but I haven't made any connection to the backend DB. Okay, you won't face any error on your application, but still you are connected to the database only. In case you are triggering another connection, it will be immediately able to connect it back. So let's say user 2 is also there and they are making some transaction means, then immediately it will check the connection and make that query. So the final important mode is the statement pooling mode. Okay, statement pooling mode is uh, like uh, mostly most of them won't use that. 
uh, it is like uh, whenever you are executing a statement, single statement, uh, it will immediately open the connection and close it back. Okay. Let's say I am having two connections open to the backend DB. Okay. So what will happen? I am executing two statements here. Drop table and drop table Y. Each statement will go to the different connections here. Okay. It, it means that uh, I can't maintain any order first thing and I can't prepare a transaction <coughs> here. Okay. This pooling mode doesn't support any kind of transaction. It can be only used for kind of select queries or auto commit enabled. If you want to have any transactions enabled means then this thing won't support. And also if I forgot one more thing like a transaction pooling mode you can't use set variable. Okay. Session if you are having any session level variables you can't use that. And also prepare statement won't be supported on transaction mode. So this is all about the pooling mode. So you need to choose which pooling mode will opt for you. Okay. You can only choose one pooling mode based on your application. You can check with the development team and based on the requirement you can choose pooling mode and then uh, we can go to the next setting so next important setting is authentication mode okay so there are two types of authentication mode we have one is the auth file and another one is the auth user okay yeah let's okay let's talk about the auth file first so it is a simple file text file that contain the username and password okay and what we will do auth file is a variable we will give the input of the file location in this uh, uh, file in the pg bouncer okay pg bouncer will refer to this text file to contain the username and password so okay this is the auth type variable so we need to choose either md5 or m password to choose the auth file and uh, this will be the default location of the file this file will contain the username and password of the database users and we don't need to worry about the password in your file because all the password will be the md5 hash so even if someone is reading means they can't be able to get the password so this will be the context of the file. It will be first having the username in double quotes and there will be a space and then the hash of the password. Okay. Uh, P, whenever there is a new connection is making, PG Bouncer will read this file and it will make the connection to the database. Problem with this method is in case if you are making, creating any new connection in the database, you, you are creating any new user in the database means you need to update this file mandatory or else your new connection can't be able to make any connection to the PG bouncer because the connection is the username and password is not existing here. So it will be like a maintenance worker. So it is okay for a one or two servers. If you are having much plenty of 10 or 50 servers means it will be difficult to maintain with this auth file method. So there will be another option we have that is auth user. Okay, what it will do means instead of referring to your file, it will directly get the username and password from the database itself. Okay, so by because of this, we don't have any maintenance overhead because whenever the connection is hitting, it will automatically get the username and password from the database. So even if you are creating a new user, it will be available immediately. So that is the advantage of this one. For most of the production use cases, this is the opt method. So if you are going to deploy it for production, it will be initially it will be taking time time for setup but you can go with this approach itself so the auth user is like yes we need to create one more user that is low privileged user this user pg bouncer will use to log in the database and get the username and password of the database that's the reason for this user and it is a very low least privileged user we don't need to maintain any of it and we will give the context of this username and password in this file that is etc pg bouncer user list yeah, this is the uh, context will be there. So we can give the low privilege user and the password of this. PG Bouncer will use this username and password and log in the database whenever there is a user address. Once it matches the credentials, then only it will allow the login or else it will reject it. So yeah, if you have, so far we have completed PG pooling mode and uh, other than that, uh, the authentication method also done. These are the very two important things. Remaining all variables are self-explanatory variables. Uh, so far any doubts? Uh, for single data, uh, actually question is can we use different uh, uh, pooling modes for a single database? Okay, for a single database, we can use only one pooling mode. Okay, or right, let's say you are having a database A and database B on your PostgreSQL base. You, for database A, you can use only one. Let's say either session or transaction. For database B, you can use different one. The single is instance itself, you can use a different one, but for single database, you can use one. Okay. 
So other variables, important variables like max length connection. This will be like a max connections. So maximum number of connections to be allowed to the post for PG bouncer instance. And uh, default pool size. This will be like a maximum number of server connections to be allowed in the server side connections. And the minimum pool size will be like a minimum number of connections will be always created in the pool. And reserve pool size, in case it will be a very useful variable, in case there is a surge in the connection means we can use this reserve pool size. So in case there is no connection available in the pooler means it will use the reserve pool size uh, available connections and make connections to the database. Yeah, reserve pool timeout, so usually it won't immediately use the reserve pool, it will wait for certain time. In case if the, in, within the certain time, if there is no connection solvable, then only it will assess the reserve pool or else it will go with the default mode. And listen, port is the default port is 6432. Okay, if you want to change it, you can change it at the time of the startup. Okay, we will see the working of the PG bouncer with some small setup. Here we will consider max line connection as 10 and default pool size is 3 and reserve pool 1. And pooling mode, by default, we will go with the session itself. Uh, yeah. Now this is the architecture, let's say application is running and PG Bouncer is running on the port 6432. My application will connect to the PG Bouncer through 6432 and PG Bouncer will connect to the database through 5432. Let's say I am pool area, I am having three connections available. As per my setting, connect pooling area, okay, connection pool, okay. And reserve pool size is one in this setting here. Okay, so reserve pool size will be available and let's say the bottom area will consider as the waiting area. The connections which don't have any of connections from the application where don't have any available connection in the pool area will be moved to the waiting area. Okay, let's say I'm having two connections sent from my application to the PC bouncer. And I, of course the connections are available in my pool area. It will be immediately used and the connections will be open to the server side. Now let's say, uh, yeah, I'm closing the connections means then immediately it will be sent back to the pool area. So again, the three connections is available. Now consider I am opening four connections now, but my pool area only have three connections. What it will do, the three connections, first three connections will be served immediately by the pooling itself and remaining one connection will be sent to the waiting area and it will be waiting for certain time that is called reserve pool timeout. By default it will be like 10 seconds. So this connection will be waiting for 10 seconds. Okay, it is having two options now, either the existing connection needs to be closed or else it needs to get the connection from the pooling area depends on it. Okay. In case, let's say first case, let's say existing connection is closed means it will assess the pooling area and directly get the connection. In case if timeout that it happened, there is no connection still available means it will go to the waiting area that is the reserve pool area and I will use the available reserve pool and make the connection to the database. Okay. Uh, so for any doubts? It will be on waiting state. Okay. In case if the it will be it will so pool size there are connections available means it will use that. In case if there is no connection means we make it there. Depends on the timeout. Yeah, we will get timeout. We also have variable for that. How much how long it needs to be waited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can't restrict the users based on the reserve pool. Okay, we can only set the timeout or we can completely disable the reserve pool. Hmm. Yeah, for database level, you can add one more module and you can make it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh no, the latency wise, it will be okay. You are saying the through waiting area or directly normal with the PG concept? Normal. Yeah, the latency will be there when compared to the direct connection, but it will be very negligible. Okay, you can post it on your application server itself. So it will be directly connect through the local host, through socket, either through socket or even through port. So the latency is very negligible. No one noticed. When compared with the audience proxy, here latency will be very less. Uh, mostly the app server will be the opt one. Yeah, you can put it app server in case app goes down, the respective PG bones will also goes down. If you are putting it on the database server, uh, there are chances it may get hand. We don't usually recommend that on database server. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, you can put it, but actually the reason is PG Bouncer can use only single core. If you are putting high resource means, it can't actually effectively use all the resources out. 
So better you can just force it on any of the instances. Yeah. Uh, that depends. The so cool area we will set it at that start. Okay, let's say time mode we will be setting up. So let's say default 30 seconds. So cool area we can set it like some kind of 10 or 20 connections, not more than that. It, if it cross only, it will again the rest of the things will be waiting. Yeah, it is done. Yes, we need to just reload it. Yeah, it won't give any impact on runtime. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we have one case study upcoming. It is because of the connection port. Yeah, application connection is also there. But what it will remain, uh, it doesn't understand much. Yeah, of course, Java tools are there. And we face, uh, in our cases, uh, in while handling the customer, we face some outages because of the connection pulling on application on database. Yeah. Yeah, they may miss something and it will cause the increase in number of connections on the database because you know pool needs to maintain that much connection mandatorily. Okay, let's say you are setting your Java application 50 minutes. In database, it should be created as much. Okay, in case if it is not, if you are killing 10 connections, it will create again. Okay, that will be a problem for database. So yeah, PG Bouncer, once you set up the PG Bouncer, it is very important to have monitoring because it will be like a uh, uh, hot now it will place in between the database and the application if your pg bouncer goes down even your database is up and running you are down okay so it should have proper monitoring there are two options we have first one is cli okay pg bouncer by default have cli approach okay you can uh, log in through the cli by using psql if you can see the pg bouncer is the database name instead of using postgresql or uh, other than that uh, application database if you are using pg bouncer means Instead of logging to the Postgres, it will log into the PG Bouncer admin console. Okay. Once you are into the admin console, it will be like this. Yeah. So you can use any so command to show all these methods. Okay. The first line so help databases all or we can use to see that. So here example, I am using the so pools command. So it will show what are the available connections. Okay. You can see my database name is test and username is mydbobs. Yeah, and the client active is, uh, here I have considered total connection pooling as 100, okay. Sorry, 50, I have used a 50. So, and I opened 100 connections to the database. You can see client active is 50 and client waiting is 50. It means that my client 50 is served by server active. <coughs> Remaining client 50 is waiting for the servers to be available, okay. And uh, other than that, you need to notice another important thing is max wait. You could see it is in seconds, it is in zero. But the below one max weight microseconds, it is having some variable value. So it is a means that my some of my connections are waiting state. Okay. So in for some of the cases, it is fine if it is in microseconds. In case if it is in seconds, means you need to consider increasing your pool size, or else you may face increased latency on your application. App. So and one more problem with the connection CLA method is uh, you can see the stats at the time of your login only. You can't see any kind of uh, uh, older metrics or anything. Okay, so it won't be helpful much for any issues. If you want to do some postmortem of an issue, it can't be helpful. Okay, so for those cases, you can use the Grafana method. Okay, so there are multiple open source Grafana exporters are available. If you are having Percona PMM tool, you, that is also having inbuilt a PG Bouncer. Or else PG Watch also you can use that. That is a good session done by Paolo. And this is the default one. This uh, dashboard is uh, prepared by the CS team. Okay, this dashboard will give almost all the complete stats of the PG Bouncer. Uh, for a week, you can use for a one month data itself. You can see the data depends on your retention day. You can see, visit all the data. And here you can see uh, most important thing is client waiting and waiting for server connection. If you are seeing any one of it is more than one means, then you need to know uh, you need to uh, troubleshoot your uh, PG Bouncer and you, are, you need to upscale your instance or else you need to increase your pooling size accordingly. So we made some benchmarking when making direct connection to the database and through the PG Bouncer. Now let's see the results. So for this benchmarking, I have set the 50 as the pool size. 
and who is just hosted on the application server it means the pg bench i have used the tool to do the benchmarking and uh, i have used the connection like 50 150 to up to 500 connections and we will see the results now okay so this is the benchmarking first we will see the tps let's say without connection puller it means a direct connection to the database and with connection puller through the pg bouncer so what we could see is uh, initially with very less number of connections uh, direct connection is working better okay so one connection i am saying 1000 tps i am getting but uh, through the pg bouncer i am getting very less with the second state let's say 50 uh, the difference is reducing okay but when i am crossing more than 50 when my db started to get low and 7500 means my direct connection started to decline because my database started to get huge load on the server okay and but my connection puller is always stable okay i don't get any issue and uh, around 500 connection my database when crashed when i'm making direct connection but with the pg bouncer even though latency is high but i'm able to serve the traffic without any downtime the same metrics for the total transaction process here also the similar pattern lower connections the direct connection is good but more than 50 um, the pg bouncer connections is good so what we could understand from this benchmarking is direct connection performs good if you are having less number of connections let's say 10 20 means you can you don't need to implement pg bouncer on your infra you can just use the same one but if you are having more than 100 or 200 connection means definitely you can consider to use pg bouncer or any other connection pullers okay to avoid there is even if there is a surge in traffic means at least you can save the database some max crashes or max time out here so and one more consideration is if you are you can use you just you need to use only for the oltp workload where you can create more number of connection creation and destroy okay it is not recommended to use for the volap workload because where we rarely create connections yeah. so under one few more considerations if you are using a, a pg bouncer it will be a single point of failure uh, because it doesn't have any inbuilt support of the ha okay so if you want to have ha you can host multiple pg, PG bouncer instance on top of it you can have a load balancer and your application can connect to the load balancer so load balancer will direct the traffic to the available pg bouncers backend so and if you are having one connection puller it is recommended to handle only thousand connections if you are having five thousand connection means you should not overload your pg bouncer because it is a single process most of our cases it will get hanged immediately okay so you should have multiple instances of pg bouncer so that it can scale more number of connections yeah, and the very important thing is OS should be optimized uh, or else uh, it will be working fine initially if the OS is not optimized means when there is a spike in connection you will get an error okay you will get means that you will get an outage so the important OS thing is the open file limit so that is the very important thing if you are going to use PG bouncer you should appropriately set the open file limit yeah okay uh, one production use case uh, nearly or a few months back we got one of our customers okay they got some issue which means that they have very high cpu usage for the last one week okay and they told they hadn't done any kind of new deployment but the cpu was always high they told that and they are on aws audios and this is the ec2 this is the instance type that is a gpu and 64 gb ram okay this is the spike you can see uh, the until the 21st it was very calm but after 21st there was a spike and when they reached us it was almost nearly 90 okay due to this issue they faced a lot of uh, uh, outages slownesses okay and yeah they told clearly told they hadn't done any deployments and what actually happened is when we got the server we installed our monitoring tools and when we do the audit we couldn't find any cpu causing queries and also we did all the basic things like uh, vacuums and all all are looking perfectly fine other than only the connections on the day onwards there is an increased number of connections itself so what happened is uh, actually they increase the number of applications okay each application is having one connection cooler okay so they once they increase the number of applications they are exactly the equal number of connections also increased in the database side okay so they have total of 5000 connections so due to this change on application it reached around nearly 4.8k 9k okay the internal dba team what they did is to avoid outage because of the max connections they started to kill the connections idle connections because all the connections are idle they just started to kill it 
even they set up a crown to do that so this is you can see this is not a straight line straight line of thing there is a up and down for each year second the application is creating the connection and the db team cron is destroying the connection okay that is the reason whenever the connection is created there is a spike whenever the connection is destroyed there is a drop okay because of the connection puller behavior what it will do when the connection is not created the connection puller will create it immediately again and again so this is the reason caused with the outage okay when we i found the root cause and proposed to the customer and uh, due to some reasons they couldn't uh, change the or reduce the number of applications and we proposed different uh, options like audios proxy because they are on aws and also the pg bouncer due to some reasons they moved to the they are okay to implement pg bouncer finally once we implemented the pg bouncer so before their architecture was like this so all the applications are directly hit the database even the new applications also directly hit the database so after that all the connections were hit the pg bouncer only the limited active connections only hit the database okay so this is the after graph okay so this will be like immediately once we improve approach to the once we implemented the pg bouncer immediately the spike went down okay what we did we just update the dns and pointed all the application to connect through the pg bouncer okay so immediately we could see the results that cpu is back to normal and also that along with that we did some kind of performance tuning and finally we were able to downsize the instance too yeah. so for any doubts guys yeah i have a doubt yeah yes it should be uh, let's say for one cpu you have eight core uh, 32 into 10 that is 320 connections it can eliminate that was a recommendation right general yeah, recommendation yeah. so so not like that so for uh, for them right it's not like that it's more than 5 core five, five kg nearly 5 kg yeah connections were created so that is the reason and the creation of the connection they almost delete killed nearly 4k connections so they are each is each minute they are killing 4k connection they are, they are creating 4k connection that is the reason for the spike the application server or in the db server <coughs> no the, we actually hosted it on the application server only because they are on rds okay if i want to put it means i need to get another east to mission which is unnecessarily okay so i just put it on the application server itself so is there any difference in putting on db server uh, not much difference uh, why we are not recommending on db server means in case uh, if, uh, we are doing any kind of failover stuff means we need to redo it again we need to you need to move the configuration there and you need to set up on your new replica if it is hosted on the application server means it will be stay long Yes. If uh, like you mentioned that you place the PG bouncer on application server, yeah. so if, let's assume I have ten such application servers connecting to a database, yes. so I can have ten different PG bouncers. Yeah, we can have the ten different PG bouncers. Yes, we can have that. For each application, we can have one PG bouncer. It is lightweight. You can install it, and even we can put the same configuration files over there. It can be easily connected. And of course, this is a very good approach. Even in case only if your application goes down, then only the PG bouncer will also go down. You are you can serve from your remaining applications. I have one question. Uh, yes. So what happens when the database goes down? Uh, let's say in a failover situation, how does uh, PG Bouncer hand, handle that? No, uh, PG Bouncer doesn't have the capability to handle that. So what will do if your database goes down means you will also get the error like the similar stuff. So if we reload the PG Bouncer configuration to point to the new primary. Yeah. Then uh, you need to update the config of the IP. Then it will be connected in there. so the existing clients who are connected to pg bouncer mm -hmm. uh, will they have to reconnect or can they continue uh, uh, using the uh, no computer? there is one more future is there for reconnection uh, maybe we will discuss that but uh, yeah most it will be reconnect if you are manually changing the ip and reloading it if you are using an automation and updating the uh, pg bouncer configuration then a failover happens yeah what is yeah for those cases right as i told pg there are a lot of this is very basic stuff if you are having failover capability means we have pg pool it will uh, read accept the connections based on the availability okay, okay. we will see i will give you a overview of the pg pool
So PG pool two, we will have just a quick overview of PG pool two. So what is this means? It is a completely multi-threaded architecture. So you can effectively use the CPU ports. And uh, it, other than that, it is like kind of redirect routing is also there. If you are from MySQL background, you know about the proxy SQL. It is kind of effective load balancing. It is almost similar to that. You can do the redirect routing and query catching, and it is having inbuilt uh, hatch. Okay, if you are having means you can put uh, multiple PG pool, and it will be like uh, uh, having keep a LFD, You can configure top of it. So yeah, general configuration is uh, complexity is much high and the resource usage will also be there because of its uh, many number of users it needs to process all the queries. So on PG Cat it is an advanced version of PG Bouncer which is like a, we can say it's a fork and it is almost like a PG pool it supports all the thing. Only advantage is if you are already having PG Bouncer means you can easily migrate to PG Cat because almost all the variables are same. It is a multi, you can it can use all the CPUs process okay and it is having read write routing and the query catching also there so based on the TTL you can configure queries and uh, you can route to the read queries to the replicas if you are having a complex architecture like patronies and all so for those cases PG cat or PG tool is recommended so this is the benchmark done by the Tempo team in the last. Uh, few months back it's like uh, you could see that when compared with the pg bouncer which is a single threaded architecture and pg cat which is a multi-threaded one so latency is which very better here in pg cat with the more latency is worse so pg bouncer is having higher latency when having more number of connections but uh, pg cat is having less latency so this is the transaction per second so here also the similar pattern <coughs> So th let's have a quick summary. So PG Bouncer works well for the simpler system. If you are having complex environment like Patroni and all means, so you can prefer to have PG Pool or PG Cat. And ensure to test load balancing if you are using PG Pool because we also, um, some of our customer face some issues when they are using the read rate routing. Okay, it may point to some wrong uh, servers. So you need to thoroughly test it once. And OS tuning is mandatory. And Hache is also you should consider if you are going for any of the load balancing. Yeah, and mostly you can avoid it for the Vola workload. So some of the references, we can also guys see that. So and uh, this is about our LinkedIn page and Twitter and YouTube page. You guys can follow us. And we also do monthly webinars and we publish weekly blogs and quarterly meetups. So you can also join us. Mostly we do it on Bangalore. We will also plan it in Hyderabad. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> next section will be on uh, boosting positive SQL performance.